hey, it's coffee, and I let him. He's been a sook today, so all the efforts that I've been trying to make unpacking are being thwarted by cuteness. It's also really cold today and it's raining, so I'm not too surprised. But yeah. So unpacking's happening slowly. Um <laughs> it's it's definitely been like a continuation of that whole, you know, Murphy's Law. Whatever go whatever can go wrong does go wrong. Last week we moved the washing machine in finally and it was not working. It was uh leaking instead. So <laughs> I had to like hand wash clothes because we're like we're several weeks now behind in washing just because of moving and all the craziness and everything. So I spent like three hours hand washing clothes until Andrew could fix the washing machine. I've now got the washing machine going but now it's raining so I can't use the clothesline. So we set the dryer up in the garage for now I'm doing that as much as I can, but it also means that I have to go outside to put clothes in and check on the clothes and everything, which is going to be a pain in my knees today. So I'm going to take it easy with the unpacking and just, yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's really funny because um, oh, you can't really see because of the light, but like if I look straight out of my window here, there's a house on the corner. Oh, there it is going. Okay. Um, so there's like a house right there on the corner. Um, so the other day I'm sitting here, I think it was like Thursday, I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, oh, you know, like taking a rest from unpacking. I was almost finished packing, unpacking the kitchen. So I was taking a rest because my knees were playing up. And I, I was like, oh, okay, now I've got to go up. And now I've got to get up and do this. So I like turn to stand up to go do stuff and I see like people moving into that house and I'm like wait a second I recognize that person so I like called him and like I can see you <laughs> you're currently standing in the front yard of this house on the street and he's how, how do you know I can see you from my new bedroom window <laughs> so yeah one of my good friends is now living like right there and he has a five month old puppy, so I get to go and play with his puppy. Um, yeah. So <laughs> it was just like really random and funny and also sort of creepy. Because then I was just like, now now I just want to send him text messages every so often, like, I can see you. <laughs> I like that shirt you're wearing. Just because it's, it's random and creepy. But unpacking is getting there. I'm doing my cross stitch stuff now. Um, my my philosophy so far has just been get all the shit out of the boxes and put it somewhere and sort it out later. So that's what I've been doing. I thought moving away from Edmonton and the park that we lived in would mean that I wouldn't have to put up with those douchebags anymore, but there's a park just down this way and it's a huge park, so yeah. Um, so what else has happened? Just unpacking, really. Um, I'll do another like zoom around my room in a second. You can see how much of a mess it is, but it's getting there. It is. Um, so, uh, what else? What else? What else? What else? Real estate are being fuckholes about our bond for the old place. We hired their cleaner to clean the old place once we moved everything out. We like the place. We lived in that place for three years. It did not look like it had been lived in for three years. But the real estate turned around and, oh no, there's, you know, there's this and there's this and there's some grass clippings because you just mowed the lawns and there's weeds in the driveway and there's um, a nick in the door, like above the door frame. How the fuck do you even put, like, a nick in above the door frame? Considering I'm short as fuck and when we move stuff in and out of that house, we would lift it put an old doona underneath and drag it that way so that we weren't bumping into walls and stuff because we were really mindful of it. Like, there's no way you can put a mark above a door frame. I'm short as fuck. I can't even reach above a door frame. But, yeah, they're just being 
assholes. And like we hired their cleaner and they're just like, oh, and you didn't clean the bathroom, you didn't clean the laundry, and the kitchen's not done properly and all this shit. That guy like worked his ass off. Like he, let's read it again. He, like, he, he spent like four to five hours cleaning that house. And it was like it was crazy good looking after we after he was done, but yeah, they carried on. Oh, and the blinds weren't done properly, and you know, blah blah blah. So we had to go back and do more, more cleaning for the old house. And then they came back. Oh no, it's still not good enough. Still not good enough. So basically, Andrew's going to hear from them this afternoon. And if they keep carrying on, I'm going to be calling the tenant union. Uh, like the tenant dispute union or something like that. They give like advice and stuff. And yeah, I'm gonna basically take it, take them for everything because we've left that place in a really fucking good condition considering all the shit we put up with as well. Like the horrible fucking plumbing, just continual plumbing issues. The oven that only ever worked on one setting. The fact that when we moved in, we had to spend the first six weeks there without an oven because they needed to fix it and they only fixed it so that one setting worked. We put up with the mold, we put up with the neighbors in the back, we put up with the house falling apart and the fact that you know all the taps started leaking and stuff and like whenever we'd have a plumber out they would fix one problem when there were three and they wouldn't fix the other two because I oh know the real estate only paid us to do one. Like we put up with taps dripping all the time we put up with, like, the walls were cracking. There was some cabling that was coming out through one of the walls. There were power points that weren't up to code and were loose and stuff. There were some that we couldn't even flick the switch on, so we had to, like, not use them and stuff. And these were all things that we reported. And we still put up with them because the owner refused to fix it. He didn't want to pay any more money to fix the house. We put up with it. And now they're carrying on, oh my god, the place is not spotless, it's not perfect. It's fucking spotless, I can tell you. Like, it's crazy clean in there. Like, it doesn't look like it's been lived in for three years, I can tell you that. And it's just, it's pissing us off because it's just like, we want to be done with that house because that house was a piece of crap and it was stressful and we just want to be done with it. So, hopefully today we get all clear. Hey, you get your bond back. It's all good now. Carry on. And that would be nice. Because Andrew needs to buy a new bed. So that's what the bond money will go to. So, yeah. Um, apart from that, what else happened? I went to a fetish party again. Um, there was a bunch beforehand and <laughs> I got really antisocial. Like we were sort of sitting in the corner because there were some poker stops right near the bar that we were in. So we like put some laws up. Me and my friends put some laws up on the on the bar, all on the poker stops, and we caught some Pokemon. I caught a Kangaskhan. I'm I'm really happy with that. Like, apparently Kangaskhan has been spawning a lot the last couple of days, um, and I keep seeing people who are getting like really good Pokemon around where I live, but they're not popping up at my house. So that means I have to actually leave the house at some point. Although, I now that we've moved and I can start showing it again, I went to eBay and I got a couple of um, like phone holders um, for like bikes and I'm going to try and attach them to the scooter. Illidan is in his favourite place. He loves the windows. But yeah, I got a Kangaskhan. Let's see, recent, recent Pokemon. So, I caught... The ghastly, and I hatched a Cubone. I was so happy. I love Cubone. Um, Spiro, Poliwhirl, Caterpie, Staryu, Naran, Weedle. Um, caught a Beedrill as well from those focus stops, which I was pretty happy about. And there we go, Kangaskhan. He's not very strong. I've seen some much stronger ones. But I'm just happy to have one. Like at this point I'm just collecting because I want to get as many of them as I can. And no, no. Um the week before I had another fetish party on and I caught Marowak in Newtown. So 
I took over a gym in the city for a little while too. Also got a dragon air. And Hitman Lee. And a gloom. gloom. You can sort of see out the window when I do that a bit more. <laughs> um, yeah, so lots lots of Pokemon. Pokemon in. I love Pokemon. And I got. <laughs> I found out what was happening with my power chair. Um, so the power chair was approved um, by the government body called Enable in January was when I got the letter to say, hey, you've been approved, you're going to have the chair in like 8 to 12 months. Well, it's now almost the end of August. Um, so it's been eight months almost. And um, to people that, like, because Andrew works for the company that's going to be receiving the order from Enable and building my chair and bringing it to me. Um, to do the final fitting and all that sort of stuff. So Andrew works for that company. So Andrew's workmates are just like, hey, you know, your your housemate's chair hasn't, we haven't got your housemate's chair yet. Like, what's what's going on? It's not usually this long. Like, we know people who are in the same situation where they're semi-able, that it's not an urgent chair, and it still hasn't taken this long. And he goes, well, I don't know. We're still waiting to hear. So he contacted Enable, because he's got industry contacts and all that, and it turns out, what's the mail name? Am I getting mail? I don't know. Um, yeah, so we contacted Enable, and it turns out that they either didn't get lost or didn't record the extra information that they asked for that my OT sent them. I know the OT sent it because she came to me to make sure everything was okay before she did. So I know it's not the OT's fault. It's happened somewhere either in between the OT and Enable or at Enable. Um, but instead of contacting my OT to say, hey, we're still missing this information, they've just left it. So that's why I don't have my chair yet, is because their system says oh, we're still waiting for this extra information when the OT's sent it, and her system says we've sent it. So we contacted my OT, and we're just like, hey, this is what's happening, and she got really, really pissed off and probably yelled at some people. Um... So then we updated everything and we sent the information again. And I think now what's going to happen is that Andrew is going to start making weekly calls to enable because apparently I should have had my chair by now, my, my powered chair. And it's all kind of ridiculous. Um, it would be coming very handy too because where I live, there's a couple more bus routes that I can get, but like there's no footpath on this side of the road to get to the bus stop, because there's a bus stop like right on this side of my house, this side of my house, um, and it goes to Mount Druitt, like it goes to the shopping centre and stuff, but there's no path leading up to it, and it's just like a little patch of concrete, it's not a proper bus stop. So in the manual chair, I have to walk the manual chair around the side of my house to the bus stop and probably push my chair up onto the bus without being in it, because I'm not going to be able to do it because of the grass. If I had the power chair, it's not going to be an issue. Um, yeah, and like the power chair means that I can actually go places even if it's raining, because in the manual chair you can't, because as soon as the hand rooms get wet, you can't push. Even with gloves and shit on, you, it's, it's just it's a nightmare. So hopefully something will happen there, but it's it's frustrating. And like this, this is the thing that the NDIS was supposed to improve, but... It's still not improving. But I'm going to do a little thingy of my room now that Illidan's not in my lap. So, all that's the same. You can see I'm unpacking this tomato sauce there. Um, so there's my drawers. I'm rearranging them. I, I moved the colours around because I just felt like moving the colours around. We've got some books unpacked and some collectibles and my Kallax. You can't see it. It's only the... It's only the eight one. We did have it in the lounge room, and it was tipped on its side, and it was for the TV. But the, my little brown shelf that's over here now looked like crap next to the two big black ones. So Andrew said, hey, let's put the Calax in there. I moved that up the stairs of the back. I, that was in the garage, so I moved it into the house by myself 
using science, and it was a pain in the ass. But as you can see, it's going to be my Blizzard shelf. So, yeah. And then, yeah, this shelf is going to be like craft stuff, and then I'm leaving a gap for when I extend my desk. Um, yeah. So that's what I'm working on right now. It's getting this organized. Um, and just like coming up with different ideas and stuff and different storage ideas to fix it up. So let's put this back. Let's not fall. Don't fall, please. There we go. Cool. So, yeah. Um, kitchen's pretty much done. It's still a little bit of a mess because it's stuff still everywhere. Um, and what else? Um, laundry's pretty much done. The bathroom is done. Um, it's actually kind of amusing because because the bathroom is basically a wet room. Like, it's an accessible wet room. There's no PowerPoint in there. So I, when I went to do my undercut the other day, I'm just like holding the clippers and I'm like, crap. So I've had to like run an extension lead from the spare room to the bathroom to use my clippers. So, yeah. But, yes. I'm probably going to, I should make something to eat. I'm, I've, I've cooked using the gas stove top. The gas stove top pilot lights don't work, like the clickers, the thing that clicks, that doesn't work. So you have to turn it on and light it. Which freaks me out a bit. Um, it, it, I have to like put it on low and then do it because I'm so afraid of it not working or like blowing up and stuff. It's, it's a thing. Um, I still haven't been able to use the oven because it's also gas. So um, I'm probably going to do something that needs to be cooked in the oven for dinner tonight when Andrew's home so that, you know, if something happens, you know, if I'm freaking out too much, he can sort of do it. Um, I know once I do it, it'll be fine. And then the only thing I need to watch is just like cooking times and stuff like that because I've never cooked with a gas oven. I've only ever had electric, so I'm used to like making all my cakes and stuff with electric. So I don't know how to change, like what to watch for that. So I gotta work that out. Um, but yeah, it's it's getting there. It's getting there. But I keep saying that. <laughs> so yeah, the next the next week is going to be just sort of unpacking my own stuff a bit more. Um, this weekend Andrew is going camping with some friends, so I'm going to have the house to myself for like four days, five days, something like that, uh, which will be nice, but it also means that I need to get at least semi used to cooking with the oven before then, because otherwise I'm going to be like eating pasta for like five days. <laughs> it's not something that I need to do. Um, yes. So... That's it for update wise. I haven't done any stitching. Um, I've done a little bit of gaming and stuff because that's what I do at night time. I really need to um, get a lamp for my desk because if I'm going to stitch, I can't stitch at night because the light that I've got here is weak as shit. So I need to get a lamp for my desk. I have an idea for one for when I build the extensions onto the desk, but. I like to just get a nice lamp for now. Um, yeah, so that's it. We go and keep keep cleaning and organizing and stuff. You never realize how much crap you have until you have to move it and then unpack it again. Seriously. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm gonna go. I'll talk to you guys later. But.